Come on, come on. Who doesn't love a good transition on your videos, right? And we've got a lot of great ones here in DaVinci Resolve. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of the new transitions that were added in Resolve 18.5. There's a bunch of cool ones in there. I've been trying them out, playing with them a little bit. So this video, we're going to run over all the new ones and just show you how they work show you some of the settings that you can change to kind of tweak them and customize them and make them your own. And then you're going to have a whole new bag of transitions to use on your video clips. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. They've got a ton of awesome classes on there. We're going to talk about them more a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's jump into Resolve and take a look at some of these new and cool transitions that were added in Resolve 18.5. Let's go. So jumping into Resolve, let's take a look at where you can find these new transitions in Resolve 18.5. Five. So currently I'm in the edit tab right here. You can also take a look in the cut tab if you'd like, but I prefer the edit tab. So that's where we're going to be looking today. Now, in order to find your transitions, the new ones, they are just with the other transitions, which we can find in our effects library. So I'm going to come up to the top of the screen, click on effects. I want to make sure I'm on my video transitions. And then I'm going to scroll down until we get to fusion transitions right here. And we've got 17 new transitions here that we're going to take a quick look at. And then I'm going to just show you which ones I kind of like and prefer, a few of my favorites. And uh, we'll take a little more in-depth look at those, show you some of the options that you can do with some of those. So I just have two clips in my timeline here, one of uh, some Frisbee tossing, one of some yoga. And I'm just going to put my playhead right in between the two so we can get a preview of the different transitions as we take a look at them. So the first one here is the block transition. And if we just hover over that, we can see it kind of does like a blocky glitchy type thing, right? And keep in mind, it's going to move pretty quick, right? You can change the speed of your transitions if you want, but the block glitch is pretty cool. The next one that we have that's new is the circle spin. So if we start uh, on the left here and we kind of drag across, you can see the circle will spin. Kind of cool, right? Almost looks like a little record or something like that. Pretty cool. The next one we have here is the detail dissolve. And if we scroll across that, you can see as it goes from one clip to the next, the first clip starts to kind of fade out and you lose those details there. So that's detailed dissolve. The next one that's kind of cool is called edgy. I think this one is kind of neat. If we scroll over that, you can see it kind of highlights the edges, kind of like the, uh, was it the edge? I think it's edge effect um, in the open effects bin, but you can see it kind of brings out those edges and kind of, you know, makes them flash with extra bright there. Kind of cool. And then it, you know, highlights the edges on the new clip and then brings it down to the original uh, clip there as it goes through the transition. So kind of cool, something a little different. How much are you going to use it? I'm not sure, but it's cool to have the option to do something like this. Next up, we have fold. So fold is just like what it sounds like. It's like a book folding in half and then new clip opening up. So that's kind of cool. Fold. Next one here is glow. If we come at glow, you can see everything just kind of turns into a bright glow and then fades back. And it's going to use the brighter parts of your image. So if you had the sun in there, for example, um, it'll really start that glow by the sun. But in this case, the sky is the brighter part of the image. So it's going to start that glow in the sky and the brighter parts of the image. So glow is a cool one too. The next one we have here is logo wipe. And this one's pretty cool. I'm going to actually show you how to use this one uh, in a few minutes here, a little more in detail, how we could put any logo that you want or any image that you want in there. And it's going to move across the screen. Like you saw the DaVinci Resolve logo in the beginning of the video as I use that as the logo wipe sample. So you can do it with text or with an image. It's pretty cool. We're going to talk about that one more in a little bit. The next one we have is Luma wipe. And this one's pretty cool because you can see it uses like a Luma mask to kind of go from one clip to the next. I kind of like that one. It's pretty cool. Next, we've got mosaic and it does just what you would think. Kind of gets pixelated and mosaic-y looking, changes from one clip to the next. The next new one here is multi-circle. So if we scroll through there, you can see it's almost like, you know, you a drop of water and the ripples kind of coming out and you can adjust this to look a little bit different. It doesn't need the hard edges on it, but you've got the multi-circle wipe there, which is kind of cool. 
coming down, the next new one here is radial, right? If we look at radial, it just kind of does a spin, which is kind of cool. Like you used to have to, you know, create this yourself, but now it's right there. We can drop it on. We can modify it a little bit if you want. It's kind of cool uh, transition there. Just kind of spin from one clip to the next. The next one I like a lot too is called the RGB splitter. So you can see as I hover over it and scrub here, it splits your channels, your RGB channels, and that's what makes the transition. I kind of like that one. It's kind of cool. Kind of almost like a glitch, minus all the blocky glitch looking. Just that RGB splitter. That one's pretty cool. I like that one. Next, we've got Rotate 90, and this is kind of like a classic transition, I think, where you just quick rotate 90 degrees from one clip to the next. Next one, we've got Sash, right? It's essentially just your uh, static, right? Your TV kind of static screen. Um, when you hover over that, it'll go to static and then transition into your next clip. The next new one we have here is called spin. And if we just hover over that, you can see it does exactly what it says. It's going to take the one clip, spin it around and transition into the next clip. The one right after that is stretch blur. This one's pretty cool too. It kind of just stretches it out left to right and it blends it from one clip to the next. So stretch blur is kind of cool. If you just want a real quick transition there, you make it short and quick, throw a little sound effect in there for your stretch blur and that one can work out pretty cool as well up next is the tile wipe you can see it just zooms out to a whole bunch of tiles and then zooms from a whole bunch of tiles back into the second clip there so before we jump into taking a look at the transitions that i think are pretty cool and i'm going to show you a little tips and tricks with just a few of them here i want to take a minute and talk about the sponsor of today's video and that is skillshare if you guys are looking to learn anything from video editing to photography to cooking to sewing, to playing the guitar, to writing, to marketing, to freelance work. Skillshare is a place that you can go to watch classes on all kinds of different topics and subjects to really help take your skills to that next level. For example, some of the classes I've been watching lately is one by MKBHD, where he talks about YouTube success and how do you plan ahead and how do you prepare your videos, your channel, how do you be successful on YouTube? Really enjoying going through there. A lot of great information and hopefully it's gonna help me be successful here on YouTube. Another class I've been watching lately is called Standing Out Online by Becky Peckham. This is a great class. I happened to stumble on it because I've seen Becky and Chris and their YouTube channel. Love their channel. They do a great job. When I saw she had a class on Skillshare, I was like, hey, let me check this out. Maybe you even wanna learn DaVinci Resolve. There are some creators on there that talk about DaVinci Resolve that give you crash courses. One of the classes I'm for sure checking out on Skillshare is one of the ones about playing the saxophone. Check this out, 1939 Aristocrat right here. The saxophone is sweet. Played for a long time, but I eh, haven't been playing as much as I used to. So I could definitely brush up on some skills, learn some new tips and tricks on playing the saxophone, new techniques, new ways to practice. So I'm gonna be jumping on Skillshare and we're gonna be trying that out. Oh, by the way, I also have an awesome Yamaha Alto right here. Got this bad boy back in the 90s. Great saxophone as well. So looking to learn more how to play, how to practice, how to get awesome on the saxophone. If you're one of the first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description below, you're gonna get a month of Skillshare for free. And that is plenty of time to go through and take a look at all the stuff that they have to offer. And just a quick note about some of the classes. I really like how they're broken down into smaller sections, right? So if you only got 15 minutes, you can jump on there, watch a lesson or two, and it keeps track of your progress for you. And all those lessons, like I said, for the most part are pretty short for the ones that I've checked out so far, which makes it really easy to go through a course little by little as you get the time to do it. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Love you guys, you got awesome stuff. And you should go over there and check out Skillshare too. So now let's jump back into Resolve and I'm gonna show you a few of these new transitions that I think are kind of cool that I might use a little more often than others and how you can kind of customize them so they work best for your video. We're gonna start with the logo wipe. I'm gonna show you how to put in your own logo into that logo wipe and use that as part of the transition. So I'm gonna come up and grab my logo wipe and I'm gonna drop it in between my clips. And now you can see if we play through it, it's just going to kind of fade from one clip to the next and it's gonna have the text fly by. Well, you could use text if you want, but let's say I wanna use a logo, in this case, the DaVinci Resolve logo. So I'm gonna select my transition. You wanna come and open your inspector. Make sure you're on the transition itself. Scroll down now, if you wanna put in some custom text here, you can go ahead and do that. If you don't wanna use the text, right down here, we've got an option to uncheck use text. So I'm gonna turn that off because I don't wanna use text. I wanna use the DaVinci Resolve logo. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. We have custom logo. And you'll notice right here, it says drag logo here. So you need to bring your logo into DaVinci Resolve first, and then we can drag and drop it here. And you should be good to go to have that logo appear on the screen and transition across the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my media pool. And right here, I've got my DaVinci Resolve logo. So I'm just gonna click, hold and drag my logo, come over to the inspector. I'm gonna scroll down a little. I'm gonna drop it where it says drag logo here. 
And once I drop it there, you'll see the file name of the DaVinci Resolve logo now. And now when I play through the clip here, you can see we have the logo wiping through. If we want it to play a little bit slower, we can just drag this transition out and make it a little bit longer so the logo doesn't fly over so quick. So once you make it a little longer, we'll play through it. Here's what it looks like. And that's it. The logo just wipes across the screen. Pretty cool. You can throw your own logo in there. Make sure it's a PNG file. That's going to work the best for you. So pretty cool. I like that one to just have the DaVinci Resolve logo, in my case, kind of fly over the screen as I transition from one thing to the next. The next one that I like a lot too is this Luma wipe. I'm going to drag and drop that on my clips. And here's what that looks like again. Now you can adjust some options here. I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. Select my clip. And if I come up into my inspector, again, under the transition, we can change the background in the foreground, the way that that looks. We can change the softness of the effect. Do you want hard edges? Do you want softer edges? We can add in a border, which is kind of cool. If you turn that on, you can change the color of it. Let's just say we do something like this so we can see what it's doing, for example. So if I just kind of slowly scrub, we can see it uses that color as part of the Luma wipe. All right, pretty cool. I like that. And you can make it any color you want. You can leave it white. You just do whatever you like. And I think this one's kind of cool. I don't know. It's something that I might use kind of a little bit more often. The next one I thought was pretty cool is the RGB splitter. So let's drag that guy drop it on there. And here is what the RGB splitter looks like, just to remind you. So you can see it splits into the different channels. Now let's select our transition in our inspector. We do have a few different options we can use here. You can change the red, green, and blue scale. So if I just come on top of it, if I change the red, you can see it bigger or smaller. Same with the green and the blue. If you want to reset them, just double click it. We can change the curve. So the way it comes in and out, maybe I want it to ease. So I'm going to change the easing to, we'll just pick the first two options here. And here's what it looks like if I change the easing on it. You can even add in some your own motion blur, which is cool. So I'm going to turn on motion blur. I'm going to crank this guy all the way up, give it a second to render. And here's what it looks like with full blast motion blur on it. Not too bad, right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And the last one I want to throw on here and show you that I like is the stretch blur. So I'm going to come on over to stretch blur right here drag and drop it onto my clips and now we've got that stretch blur so we can select our transition come on up into the inspector here we've got different controls right our blur scale we can change how much it's blurring we can change the angle of it if you'd like you can make it realistic blur or more stylized you can change the border type and the curve You've got a few different options here on how you can adjust that blur and that stretch blur. So this is one that I think is pretty cool. It's easy to add a little sound effect to it, give it a little extra flair. And uh, it's just another one that I like out of these new transitions here that I think I might find myself using a little bit more often. Let's talk about a few tips real quick to use with these new transitions. They're just going to make them a little bit better and help take things to the next level a little bit. So looking at my little sequence here that I have of all the transitions you saw examples of in the beginning, one thing to do is add sound effects, right? I put sound effects on them. They don't come with sound effects. It would be kind of cool if they did actually but they don't. So you got to find some sound effects, whether it's uh, from an online service or some of the built-in sound effects in Resolve here. But sound effects really help sell the transition, right? Instead of it just happening without any, any noise, for example, if I uh, mute my music track here, I'm going to solo out my sound effects track. Here's what it looks like and sounds like with some sound effects. Here's a few of them. So you get the idea with sound effects, it makes a big difference. Now, if I just mute that and turn it off and we watch it again, it just doesn't feel as good, right? We see the transitions. They still look kind of cool, but with the sound effects, it just kind of helps add in a little extra, right? To help sell the transition a little bit. And these are just a few sound effects I picked out. You could pick anything you want, whether it's whooshes or, you know, different kinds of glitches or, or digital sounds, whatever you guys think fits with a particular transition and with your clips, I'd go ahead and I would use sound effects on it because I think it just helps bring it to that next level, makes it look and sound and feel a little bit better. The other thing that you can do, which I've already mentioned, is either stretch out or shorten some of the transitions, right? Sometimes if I just zoom into one I got here, I might want to make it a little bit longer, right? Because I want it to happen uh, over time more. Let's say, for example, this fold, right? I don't want it to fold as fast. So if I play through it and I make that fold longer, we can see the book folds a lot slower, right? So it depends on the transition. 
there's a lot sometimes that I make them shorter, right? Because I want it to happen quicker, right? If I'm maybe uh, dropping down to the corner of the screen like this, I'll throw on a transition that's only 12 frames. And if I make that longer and put myself back bigger on the screen like this, then I might use something like, I don't know, 24 frames or I don't know, however many frames you think looks good for your particular transition. So being able to play with the speed and the length of the transition can make a big difference in how it looks and how it sells your video and just the overall feel of your sequence as you're going through your video. There you have it, guys. Some new cool transitions here in Resolve 18. Blackmagic, we appreciate you guys, man. You just keep making this program better and better and better for us. It is awesome. We love working in Resolve. We love Blackmagic Design for all the hard work and all the awesome things they put in here. And by the way, if you are looking to learn some more skills, maybe in DaVinci Resolve, maybe in business, maybe you've got your YouTube channel and you want to know how to take it to the next level, definitely check out Skillshare. They've got a ton of awesome stuff on there. I've been watching a few classes, trying to learn more. And if we're not learning, you're probably falling behind, right? We always want to be learning new things, whether it's in Resolve, whether it's for your business or just creative things in general or a whole host of other subjects that you might be interested in. Check out Skillshare, link in the description below. Do a free trial there. See what you think. Give it a try. And uh, with that said, thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And I hope that you guys go ahead and play with some of these cool new transitions. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, you have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.